Well, grace and peace, friends. I'm Kevin, and I have the blessing of serving as pastor for Crosswind Community Church. And, and I'm glad that you have chosen to take this time to connect with Crosswind for this online message today. Today, we're beginning a new message series called The Grudge. And in this series, we're going to be talking about forgiveness about how forgiveness leads to freedom for our lives. We're going to talk about forgiving others in both the big and the small offenses. We're going to talk about forgiving God, letting go of the grudge that maybe we actually are holding on to against God. And we're also going to talk about forgiving ourselves because sometimes we still live in the guilt of our past and, and we can't seem to let go of it and move forward. But my hope for these next four weeks is that the Holy Spirit is going to speak something to each of us to help us live out our faith when it comes to our relationship with God and our relationship with others. And so let's begin this new series this day in prayer together. Father God, we love you. And even though we're connecting as your church online these days, and it seems so different to us, we know that your Holy Spirit isn't contained in this building. It's not contained in any building. Your Holy Spirit can be anywhere and can minister in ways beyond what we can even imagine. And so, God, we pray that you would do just that this day. That you would come and, and meet with us right where we are. That you would come against our fears. That you would come against our worries and our anxiety. And, and that you would help us reflect the very confidence that we have in you, God. The confidence that we have knowing that you are always and completely Open our hearts this day and speak to us. Challenge and comfort us. God, have your way with us this day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. Well, I want to begin our time together today by throwing out a question at you. Have you ever noticed that we are living in an age of offense? Does it seem that way to you? Like, like people are just so easily offended. I mean, if we think about it, most of us can probably think of at least one person that we know who is easily offended. It seems so easy to be offended by some small thing. Someone gives you that certain look. Maybe they roll their eyes or something like that. Or, or maybe they speak to you with, in a certain tone. Maybe they don't acknowledge you in a crowd when you wave at them. Or they forgot to say thank you when you did something for them. We get offended these days when someone doesn't respond to our text or email, or, or maybe they respond, but not in the timely manner that we thought they should. And you know, if, if we're being honest and, and, and we don't, can't think of anybody who we know that's easily offended, the chances are then you're probably not on Facebook, on Facebook because it seems like on Facebook and social media, everyone on there is offended by something. And the crazy thing is, we can even get offended just by looking at social media. I know that I do. I get offended sometimes when I see the, the hateful, hurtful things that, that people that are my friends there post on there. You know, as I was thinking about this message and, and this part of the message, I couldn't help but remember an old saying that I think is really appropriate, especially for social media today, and it says this, it says before you speak, or in today's case, maybe text or write, 
let your words pass through three gates. Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? But the truth is we live kind of in this age of offense. We ourselves and people we know are quick to be offended, quick to complain, quick to jump to judgment, quick to become bitter. And so today we're going to talk about forgiving those small grievances, those small offenses that that often build up in our lives and and lead us into bitterness. and, And they truly keep us from the life that God wants for us. And so, thinking along those lines, I want to give you this truth for our lives today. If you're on a continuous search to be offended, you will always find what you're looking for. Isn't there truth in those words? You know, if you're looking to be offended, you're always going to find some way to be offended. But what I hope that we can come to understand here today is there is never a win, never ever a win in living offended. You know, I've never found myself saying, I'm so much better off because I'm bitter. Or I'm having such a great day because I'm offended over this small thing. Or my marriage is way better because I'm carrying a grudge in it. Friends, there's never a win in our living offended. And so here's maybe a better truth for our lives. Your life is too short and your calling too great to be offended by something so small. Your life is too short and your calling too great to be offended by something so small. Our calling from God, our our command from God in the Bible is what? Is to love. To love God and to love others. To show love from ourselves to others. In fact, I want you to take a look at at what the Bible says. Today we're going to be looking at at a few verses three or four verses from the book of Proverbs. So if you have your Bible or maybe you've got your Bible app, you might want to have it ready. And and the great news, folks, is this is a video. So you can pause this at any time and and turn to that scripture and then start it back up again. But, But I want to begin right now by having us hear and look at what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. Those with good sense are slow to anger. And it is their glory to overlook an offense. And so this is why. It's because of this verse that today's message is titled, I'm over it. Because that's what it's basically saying here. In a way, it's those that are slow to anger. It is their glory to overlook an offense, to just be over it. And so wherever you're at right now, whoever you're sitting with, just turn to somebody and just say to them, I'm over it. I'm over it. You know, that's another one of those phrases that sounds really good rolling off your tongue. Years ago, my my clergy mentor called those pious platitudes. In other words, they were cute little quippy sayings that pastors like to add into their messages. But how do you and I, as followers of Jesus, how do we as followers of Jesus really get over it? the grudge? How do we grow past those little daily temptations to become offended by just small things? Well, I'm going to give you the answer. I'm going to give you really the the sermon in a way in one statement, and then we're going to spend a few more minutes just kind of unpacking it and looking at it. But here's the answer to that. We close the gap with love. We close the gap with love. Now another another verse from Proverbs is Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12, and, and it tells us that hatred stirs up strife. Now some of your Bibles, depending on which translation you're looking at, may say that hatred stirs up conflict or stirs up quarrels. But hatred stirs up strife, 
but love covers all offenses. You see, we close the gap with love. Now, let me, let me show you what I mean by this. You see, in every interaction, there's a gap. There's a gap between an action and our reaction. Someone says or does something and there's that split second, uh, maybe a few seconds, maybe a few minutes. It's a micro gap, really, where we make the decision how we're going to react. There's always an action, there's a gap, and then there's our reaction. And so the key here for you and I today to understand is, is this. You and I get to choose what we put in that gap. And what we put in that gap is, is quite often, is most often based on how we interpret that person's action, how we interpret what they say or what they did, how we interpret their meaning for what they said or what someone does. You know, the, the very definition of a grudge is, is being angry or harmed by something that someone did or we think they did, we feel they did. You know, the problem that we have, though, when we are trying to fill the gap, when we're trying to figure out what someone said or what someone did is, our problem is, is most often we are horrible interpreters. We read more into it than we should, or we hear things in it that we shouldn't. And so there's always a gap, and you and I, we get to choose what goes in that gap. And so what do we put in there? Well, I kind of just told you, didn't I? Love, right? We choose, we choose to close the gap with love. Easy peasy, right? But we need to remember a couple things. First, we need to remember that this gap is not very big. And the second thing we need to remember is that we have a very sneaky enemy. and His name is Satan. Some of you may know him as the devil. The Bible also gives Satan some other names. Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, this is when Jesus is out in the wilderness, and there the devil, Satan, is called the tempter. And later on, near the end of the Bible, in the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 10, he's called the accuser. So you see, the devil, the tempter, wants us to interpret others' actions in a negative way. They want us, the devil wants us to look at it in the negative and to fill those gaps with accusations. Because accusations eat away at marriages. Accusations will tear apart friendships and accusations will destroy churches. And the devil wants to tear things apart and wants to destroy things. So the devil wants us to fill that gap with accusations. But the good news is, is God wants us to fill that gap with love. Proverbs, again, we're going back to Proverbs. Proverbs 17, verse 9 says this, Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates close friends. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven. So what does love do? It prospers, right? But, but love, when we love in that gap, we are giving the benefit of the doubt. Where love in the gap gives the benefit of the doubt, love in the gap assumes the best. And so as I keep saying, there's always going to be a gap. And we always get to choose what we will put in that gap. Now I realize right now that some of you are probably thinking, you know, Pastor, this sounds good and all, but, but you know, sometimes people are just rude. Sometimes people are just mean, and, and so what do we do then? Here's what I believe. I believe in this world there is always going to be people who act like they don't like us. Some will know us well and some won't know us at all. But, but I think that what we need to learn is to stay above their offense. We need to think in those moments when they do something rude or mean that, that maybe they're hurting. 
We need to think about where they are in their life because maybe they're hurting, maybe they're going through something. And perhaps instead of being offended, we just need to have compassion. Friends, there's always going to be a gap. And we get to choose what we put in that gap. If we put accusations in that gap, guess what? We're going to end up offending others or more than likely we are going to offend ourselves first. We're going to end up carrying a grudge. There's always a gap. And we have to choose what we put in that gap. Now I want to take us back to Proverbs chapter 19, verse 11. We looked at that a little bit ago. And I want to unpack it just a little bit more for us today. And so I'll put it back up on the screen, and here's what it says. Those with good sense are slow to anger, and it is their glory to overlook an offense. Now that word glory in this verse is, is a real key to this verse but the problem with the word glory in the Bible is it's, it's kind of hard to define because it's used in so many ways. But, but one of the ways that the Bible uses the word glory is this. The Bible says that Jesus is the glory of God. In other words, Jesus made God visible. And so if we in light of that definition of glory, use that in this verse, what we're going to find out is that this verse is telling us that it is God honoring to overlook an offense. That in overlooking offense, we are making, in a way, God visible. We're making God's love visible. But what does it mean to overlook an offense? Well, first of all, let's understand that overlooking an offense is not the same thing as just pretending it didn't happen. Overlooking an offense requires us to make that conscious decision to let it go. To let it go. It's really not that big. We just need to let it go. You know, in... Um, in the Matthew 18 conflict resolution policy that, that gets used in churches when there's an issue of conflict, the very first question that's asked of the people or persons or group that's in conflict is, can you let it go? Can you let it go? The very first step in overlooking an offense requires our conscious decision to let it go. In another way to look at it is overlooking an offense is actually a form of forgiveness in real time. Isn't that cool? It's a form of forgiveness in real time. We're choosing right then to not be offended. We're choosing right then to put love in the gap and to let it go. We're choosing right then not to let that weigh on us and slow us down. We're choosing right then not to let it distract us from the purpose that God has for our lives. So when someone makes a, a snarky remark in person or on Facebook, I'm over it. Or maybe a coworker doesn't invite you to a party, I'm over it. Someone doesn't say thank you when you've done something for them, I'm over it. See, we're going to grow into this idea of overlooking the offense. If we live into these words in Proverbs 19, we're going to overlook the offense because our calling is to be a representative of Jesus. Our, our job as followers of Jesus is to reflect the love and the life and the peace and the presence of Jesus to the world. I want to throw out one last pious platitude for you, if you will, and this is it. Nobody's ever made the world better by walking around bitter. Think about it. Nobody's really ever made the world better by walking around bitter. And so, friends, there's always going to be that gap. And we need to choose to fill that gap with love. We need to choose to assume the best in a situation, in an action. We need to offer compassion. 
But most importantly, we re need to remember that the calling ahead of us is greater than the offenses that are behind us. So friends, I, I pray that, um, that maybe those small offenses, those, those little grudges that you can begin right now to think about letting them go. Let's, let's do that in prayer, shall we? Loving God, we pray that through your grace, we would be empowered to show love in all circumstances. God, will you help us to close the gap, always close the gap with your love. God, I, I believe that there are some experiencing this message um, that are living in an offense. They're holding a grudge. They've got something that's been weighing on them. And God, will you just help us get over it? Will you help us move past it? Will you help us to offer forgiveness to and to receive your forgiveness for ourselves? God, we pray this day that you will help us in our marriages and in our relationships and in our friendships and in our online interaction to close the gap always with love in ways that honor you. And God, we ask that you help us to do that so that when we fill that gap with love, we not only honor you, but we also show others the life-changing love of Jesus. We show others that, that love and grace and peace of Jesus that we've received that can be available to them too. We pray this in all things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, once again, friends, I just want to thank you for connecting with Crosswind this morning or whenever you may be watching this video. Crosswind would love to pray for you. So if you have a need for prayer, you can send your request to the email that's on the screen and, and our prayer team will gladly join with you in that prayer. If it's, a, if it's just a private prayer, you can still send it to that email and just say, Pastor, will you pray for me? And I will join you in that prayer. We hope that you found blessing and meaning and relevance for your life and what you experienced here today. And we hope that if you did, that you will choose to uh, follow Crosswind on Facebook and you'll choose to subscribe and listen to future messages on YouTube. And we hope that you will choose to give generously to support the mission and ministry of Crosswind. You can do that by uh, using your phone and uh, pausing the video and using that QR code on the video. Or you can go to our website, crosswindcc.org, and there's a link there to give online. And now as we begin to wrap this service up in song, May the grace of Jesus, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I pray that you have a blessed week and you come and join with me again next Sunday. God bless. I've carried a Oh, my God.
definition I had a plan from the start Your son for redemption The price for my heart And I don't have a contact For that kind of love I don't understand Oh, I can't comprehend But all I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the heart And no reason to wait My heart needs a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 again and again. Oh, 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 oh. My heart is spinning. Long before my first breath Running into your arms Is running to life from death And I feel this rush deep in my chest Your mercy is calling out Just as I Can